Hey there guys, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate each and every one of you. In today's video what we are going to try to do is take two separate locations, geographically separate from each other. One is behind a UDM or a UDM Pro firewall, the other behind a Synology RT2600AC firewall and create a site-to-site -site VPN between them. So, for example, resources like printers, NAS devices, file servers, all will be accessible from any side of the tunnel with ease. We are going to try to keep this video as short as possible and as simple as possible. So without any further ado, let's jump over to the computer, see how this is done, see a small diagram and configure things up. Join me. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and before we'll jump right in and start configuring stuff which is very uh, simple and easy to do on the devices we're talking about today, just a small diagram before that just to understand our situation. Two separate sites, one is on uh, the left side behind a UDM Pro, one is on the right side behind a Synology RT2600 AC, both connected to the internet and what we are trying to do is to actually create a sort of a tunnel that will create one large network between these devices in which resources from one side could be reached from the other side. So a, a computer on the UDM side could reach the Synology on the Synology side and vice versa. This is what site-to-site -site VPN is all about. It's a, a specifically a relevant in, uh, in the business environment where a company with several branch offices wants to uh, connect the branch offices to the headquarters and, it, and it's even done between friends and family that want to share resources with each other. I have seen this, uh, although it's less common, I have, this, uh, I have seen this happening. So this is what we are trying to achieve and we'll test this in the end by opening a, a command prompt on uh, computers on each side of the tunnel and try to ping resources from the other side. This will be our sign that everything is working. So let's start off on the Synology side. This is actually a virtual machine, let me minimize it. And let's go over to the Synology router side and we'll open the VPN uh, plus server application. And we'll go to site to site VPN, click on add and manually Let's give it a name, let's call it STS. Pre-shared key, let's, uh, 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 let's think of a simple pre-shared key just for this uh, 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 purpose. I will make it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Please do not use this pre-shared key on your production environments. Alright, I will click on enable. Outbound, this, is, this will be your uh, 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 WAN IP address. Now, this only works, at least for now, uh, when your uh, WAN IP address is publicly routable. Currently, I think that uh, the UDM does not allow creating site-to-site uh, -side VPN tunnels behind the net, but I will uh, 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 make a video, a separate video about this topic. Local ID, private, ID, private subnet, that means what subnet we want to include in this tunnel. This means that uh, devices from the other side, what network will they be able to, uh, uh, um, to contact uh, 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 in the site-to-site uh, -side VPN tunnel. So we'll choose the local network and the remote side. Now we need to identify which, uh, which IP address, I mean when IP address, we are trying to reach. Let's go over to our Unify controller, grab our when IP address, and paste it here. And the private subnet, that means what subnets on the other side I want to contact from this side. In this case, what we'll do, of course, we can add multiple, but in this specific case, I only want to achieve uh, connectivity between this Synology side and my IoT network, which will be 
0 slash 24. All right, let's go over to the encryption side. Now, these, these uh, uh, settings right here, we'll need to match them as much as possible on the Unify side. So, uh, usually when you create side-to-side uh, uh, -side VPNs where multiple VLANs uh, exist on each side, you should, se you should select Ike v2. All right, so encryption I'm going to leave as is. Authentication I'm going to leave as is. Diffie Hellman Group 5, I'm going to leave it as is. And everything else I'm going to just keep as is. But I do need to uh, remember uh, the settings right here because they will need to match them on the unified, on the unified side. All right, let's click on OK. And the tunnel will be created uh, on the Synology side. I am going to uh, get a, a firewall alert. The, the Synology uh, firewall will create a, a firewall rule for me, but I can uh, later on even disable this rule and create a customized rule because this rule is very generalistic and permissive in nature. But I am going to roll with it for now. It will save uh, the settings and now we'll jump right in to our Unify side. Let's go to settings, networks. I am going to do it on the new uh, uh, settings menu, although I like the classic one a lot better, but Unify uh, Ubiquity wants us to go to the new settings more and more. This is uh, uh, what we'll use right now. We'll go to networks, add network. Let's call it STS as well. VPN settings, it will be a site-to-site -site VPN, manual IPsec is exactly what we need, remote subnets. Now, this is something that uh, uh, we will need uh, uh, to specify, same as we did on the Synology side. That's great. Again, if I had multiple villains on the other side, I would have specified them right here. Peer IP, now I need the WAN IP address of our Synology router. Let's go ahead. Open the network center. This will be where we can see our WAN IP address. And here it is. Let's type. All right, pre-shared key our super secret one local WAN IP address one thing that uh, I think that Unify needs to uh, to give us our users is the ability to make site-to-site -site VPN work with providing uh, FQDNs and not just IP addresses this is not supported right now I really think that, uh, that it's a shame because many users do not have static IP addresses. In fact, this uh, entire uh, uh, demo, uh, demo video is uh, configured uh, uh, with both sides having dynamic IP addresses, meaning uh, at some point this VPN tunnel will, uh, uh, will collapse because IP addresses will change on either side. If we will be able to do it on FQDNs, then we will maybe uh, uh, able to leverage uh, dynamic DNS but something that uh, 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 currently uh, Ubiquity does not support. All right, moving on. IPsec profile customized. Let's click on advanced settings. This is where we need to match our settings from the uh, uh, Synology side. Ike v2, AES 256, SHA-256, Diffie-Hellman group. Let's click on five. Let's set this to five as well and click on add network. All right, so now the tunnel itself is uh, configured on both sides. Settings pretty much uh, match each other. Let's see on the, uh, on the Synology side, we, we can already see that the tunnel has been connected. That means our, the, our settings uh, match each other and the tunnel is now up, but 
as you can see traffic is still not going through. In fact, if I'll try to ping any resource from one side to the other, it still won't go through. Now, if you recall, the Synology router has offered to create a firewall rule for me. The unified side didn't. So this is exactly what we need to go, to go do right now. But just so we will be 100% sure that nothing is working right now, I do like to see the difference. Uh, having a ping fail and then having a ping uh, uh, reply. All right, so this is a, a Linux box I have on the Synology side. And now I'm going to try to ping a resource from the Unify side, from the Unify side, sorry. And I have this virtual machine I used before. This is the IP address 182.168.99.213. Uh, Let's try to ping it. Right now, nothing goes through. What we will need to do is go to the Unify network and create a firewall rule to allow traffic on the tunnel. Let's go to Internet Threat Manage Security Internet Threat Management. Let's scroll down to Firewall. I am going to create, first of all, a group. This is how I like to do things. I'll create a group name STS as in site to site and create an IP address subnet and say 172.16.10.0.24 click apply go back to firewall go to LAN and click on create new rule that's LAN in STS enabled before predefined action is to accept the source will be STS the group that we've created uh, just a few seconds before which represents the, the LAN of the Synology side port group, e, port group any I can even uh, uh, further limit the traffic on the tunnel to specific ports destination sorry this is, will need to be my iot network instead this is my source and this is where i'm trying to reach sorry it will be the sts port group any let's click on apply all right let's look at our rule sts Let's just for the demonstration move it to the front of the line and the virtual machine we are trying to reach from our IoT network on the Unify side to the Synology side is 172.16.10.103. Let's go ahead and pull up. And try to ping. 172 16 10 I already forgot the IP address 1 103 and in fact we have pings go through but let's also uh, see the other side is able to reach where we failed before so let's go back to the Linux box Try to pin the machine on the Unify side and nothing goes through. Now, if you recall, if you saw our, uh, our video that I, uh, that I uh, published just, I think, about a month ago or uh, maybe, maybe more, in order for traffic to go in and out, we need to create a pair of firewall rules. In fact, what we we'll need to do right now is to create the opposite firewall rule. And so... If this firewall rule allowed traffic from our source IoT to the destination source of STS, which is the Synology side, what we will do right now is to create the opposite firewall rule. Don't forget to choose LAN in 
STS2, before, except, now the, now the source is going to be the STS network, and now the destination will be my IoT network. And again, we'll drag this rule to the top, just so I am sure in this demonstration that no other firewall rule is blocking the traffic. Let's go back to the Linux box and try to ping again. All right, I had a small hiccup that I forgot myself that I was trying to ping a virtual machine that does not allow pinging to it. So instead what we'll try to do from the Synology side is ping the firewall on the Unify side and this will definitely tell us that the uh, uh, VPN tunnel is up. So let's try to ping 192.168.99.1 and in fact we have a uh, ping replies that means that the tunnel is up and uh, due to firewall rules traffic is actually allowed to go uh, in and out. In fact, if we go to the, back to the Synology router and to the VPN, uh, VPN plus server, we'll see that, uh, uh, sorry, the traffic has begun to go through and now the counters are not showing zero. Something has actually happened. In fact, we can open up a browser window and let's try to actually uh, get into the login page of our Unify firewall. I don't have any other uh, uh, resources on the IoT network at this time, so hopefully this will work. And indeed, looks like we are able to reach, actually reach uh, resources on the other side of the tunnel, and here is our UDM Pro uh, uh, login page. So definitely the tunnel is up. This is how you configure it on both sides. Remember, match uh, the exact settings of Diffie-Hellman and Ike versions, etc., and uh, uh, encryption to the same settings on both sides. And one caveat you need to remember, at least uh, in this time, in May uh, 2021, you still cannot, at least not on the unified side, use uh, uh, FQDNs as the peers uh, to your side-to-side uh, uh, -side VPNs. This means this means if your other side has a dynamic IP address that the ISP uh, regularly changes, that means that at some point uh, uh, the site-to-site -site VPN tunnel will actually break or uh, disconnect. Just keep that in mind. Again, if you like this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe, please join our Facebook and Unify uh, uh, groups, the links will be in the description below. And as always, join us on the future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.